Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats takes away sin. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. For Christ says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By his will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit has come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. For nothing will be impossible for God. Usually, Annunciation falls during Lent, and there it becomes a little Christmas oasis in the midst of our penance and sacrifices. But when it's moved like this, it seems almost out of place. But it's perhaps here, when it follows Holy Week and Easter, that we see its true meaning. It's not only about the incarnation which we celebrate, but about the completion of that great work. Pope St. John Paul II says, in fact, that the, the cross and the tomb complete the work begun at the Annunciation. And we see then this link in the Mother of God and in her Son, and also this great parallel that is created. And in fact, there are various traditions on this, but some say that Good Friday, the first Good Friday was the Annunciation. So we see in Our Lady this participation in salvation in the Annunciation. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. This is a statement. This is a conviction. This is a prayer made by the most blessed Virgin Mary, not in ignorance, but 
with an understanding of what the angel tells her. And while there's a joy there, there's also an acceptance of God's will and the understanding of what that means. And so in this moment, this one full of grace and participates fully in the plan of the divine. She responds entirely and she is filled completely by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit with this, the gift of God, with God himself. And here, then, begins to do the great work of, of, of the Lord. And in that work, she then becomes a mother. And the Lord himself is given a body so that humanity might do the will of God. Humanity that rebelled. And so here, we see a parallel to Holy Week, to the Garden of Gethsemane, where the Lord in his humanity cries out to the Lord, let this cup pass from me, but not my will be done, but your will be done. And he takes that, that desire to the cross itself. The work of the Annunciation is begun in the, is, is completed rather in the Passion and in the cross. And when the Lord is laid in the tomb, we see here that parallel to the Annunciation because first, he's in the womb of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. And it's said that he passes, so that as he has passes then, passes from that body of Our Lady, and born then in Bethlehem. And so then he would be born, he would rise again. And humanity would be born from the tomb on Easter Day that we just celebrated this past week. This resurrection of his body, this glorif glorified body, is why he's come, so that we might too participate in this, in this glory, that we might pass then, pass then from, then from death to life. And that's what we see here, and even this reference into, to St. Elizabeth, that she was barren, or related, you have Our Lady, who says, I have no relations with the man. Here we see that life of God, that when there is nothing, then there is everything. When there is darkness, there is a light. And this, then we pass then in Christ, again, from this death to a resurrection, from barrenness like Elizabeth, to a garden of salvation. In fact, this is where we have then even the tomb itself is in a garden, and symbolizing then that death to life. And so all of this work begun in the Annunciation, we see this throughout the life of Mary, the Annunciation, certainly the presentation, these foreshadowings, this, this, this already beginnings of the way she's participating completely in the incarnation, in the work of her son. And this is brought to completion in what we've just celebrated the past few weeks. This is what Christmas, this is what the Annunciation is about, is in fact the passion and the death of Christ, and above all, his resurrection from the dead. It's said by Pope St. John Paul II, as well as other saints like St. Bridget of Sweden, St. Vincent Ferrer, that Our Lady, though not recorded in Scripture, was the first to witness the, uh, an appearance of the resurrection Lord. And certainly, she's the first to experience it. Why? Because she's the first to experience the incarnation at all. She's the first to see these things. She began that work. She was there at the start. And so there, she is the start of the new life of humanity at the resurrection to life. We see in these works that this promise, really, that what the angel says, nothing is impossible with God, not just that you will conceive, but that there will be a savior and that will provide the opportunity for resurrection from the dead, that we might know eternal life. This is not possible by our own means, but all of these things are true because then, because Our Lady's yes, because of the yes of her son, and because of his resurrection from the dead, that we're reminded that nothing is impossible for God and that we participate in that. And when we struggle and we still find ourselves in the tomb, we recall these words, nothing is impossible of God. 
and that we can rise as well. Again, right now, we'll, we'll recite the, the as, a, as a solemnity, the Nicene Creed, but like Christmas Day, we will genuflect, we will kneel in adoration of the Lord, born uh, for us, conceived on this day of the Annunciation, and recognize that great power of God, that indeed nothing is impossible. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the faithful ob obedience of the Holy Virgin, God takes flesh among us. The mystery of the Incarnation calls us to pray through the uh, Incarnate Son to our loving Father. That the Church may be seen as extending the Incarnation as the working body of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. That people of goodwill may learn that Christ has united himself to every person in taking our human nature, let us pray to the Lord. That scientists and researchers may work with noble ideas to further human dignity and happiness, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That we may always reverence and protect the unborn infant, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That mothers carrying children in a room will welcome the new life as Mary welcomed her son, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all those who promised to pray for, especially Tony Theokanari. Fiocanaro, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the faithful departed, our benefactors and those resting here, and the repose of the soul of Arturo and Nore, for them we pray to the Lord. Amen. Father of the Incarnate Word, we bring our intentions before you, the fabric of our daily lives, made holy by your Son, our brother in the flesh, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware of her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice and celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. May the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men for the, and for men's sake. By the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit, lovingly she bore him in her incarnate womb, that the promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of the nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us the eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Dominic and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those joining at a distance, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may through the saving power of his resurrection merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle.